you. Thanks uh, again and uh, namaskar everyone. Um, and first of all, I couldn't join in person. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I missed a lot of interesting talks in the, the panel discussion today. Um, I would love to share some of my ideas about the large language models and AI um, and specifically the language part of it. So let me just begin with sharing my screen. So AI for the next billions, and I think that is one of the big, very large goal, uh, as we can say. Um, it's a huge goal that we all can set up. Um, my name is Pranav. Uh, have been in tech industry for a long time. Um, and I want to start with this reality that over the past few years, the large language models have made the tremendous progress, uh, reaching almost like a human level performance. Um, but they are only in English, English language. The state of the art, the models like GPTs or the llamas of the world are trained almost on this entirely English data. Um, um, and because of that, um, they are English centric. Uh, their answers are, are great in English, but fails in other languages. One of the key thing that um, the reason for this one, that uh, why, why we need um, a different approach, um, because important because there are more than 8 billion, almost 8 billion people in this world, uh, speaking more than 7,000 languages but only 20% um, of this world speak English. That means that the most of this world cannot fully access the most powerful technologies of our generation. The language is the interface between humans, like we invented language as a talking between you and me um, or people. Um, and that is how we communicate with each other. But advancement of AI has made the language as the epicenter or as the center of how we communicate with machines. Um, and we should not have the gap, uh, language gap itself inside the like, large language models. So one of the um, things that we observe um, is that the, as a result of NLM's English centrality, the effectiveness diminishes significantly in other languages. So as you can see on my screen, they often fail in other languages like Hindi or Gujarati, which is my mother tongue. They unable to capture the nuances of and cultural context of these uh, languages. They struggle um, in complex questions. They often even produce wrong or incoherent answers. Um, and in language like uh, Gujarati itself, um, it, it doesn't understand the difference between um, uh, the, the tones or formal or informal tones sometimes. So, one of the key reason behind this thing is that at the core of most of these models are designed and built uh, on English data. The trillions of the tokens, what we call tokens, because the data is converted into the tokens using tokenizers, and that is what is trained upon. So he, what I'm showing you on the screen is that the even GPTs of the world um, is 92% of data was trained on English. Uh, even if you crawl, scroll the internet right now, you will find almost 70% of the web is English data. And, and that is uh, built in inside this model. In fact, the most powerful models are built upon 90% of these models on English, not only just the GPTs, but the Lamas, the Mistrals are part of it. So when these models are used in languages like the one that we use in India uh, or mixture or English, uh, they fail. Um, and so India is 1.4 billion people. Um, there are more than 14 languages in India, which are more than 10 million people uh, are speakers. 32 languages, there are more than 1 million people speak these languages. Which is diverse language and dialect background of India. India really deserves an AI with multilingual fluency. Um, it, and if you can do that with the complexities of Indian languages, we can, there is an opportunity for India to be the, not only the leader of solving our own problems, but India become the leader of AI in all the non-English markets, because there's a huge market in Europe. There's a huge market in South America. There's a huge market in APEC, other reason part of it. So, so that, that is what the key goal of the two and the Sutra is uh, focusing on and this multilingual approach. So let me, let me begin with asking this question that, okay, we want to do this thing. And then what is required? Like, what's the difference that we need to do in this thing? I feel there's three things there. Uh, one thing that we need a completely new architecture. The current architecture, which is an English centric, a single language centric architecture of large language model cannot solve the problem that we are looking for. We have to rethink our approach to develop models built on new multilingual architecture, not just massive English training data set. We must build LLM that not require training from the ground up for every language because we cannot have 15 trillion 
token data for each languages in the world. Uh, even India, like 50 languages, if we target, we cannot have the, that much data um, um, to be trained on because this doesn't exist, that data. And one of the key problems that we, right now many of the uh, Indian startups are doing is that they are fine-tuning a model. Um, so I really think and I really want to shout out that um, good efforts, but fine-tuning is not the solution. Like models like Sarvams or Open Hathis or even in Hyperclova in Korea, the fine-tuning will take you only to a level, um, uh, second level part of it. It will not it will not improve the model to the level that you actually want the consumers to be using it. The second thing we definitely need is language understanding. Uh, the core part that is understanding, because in Hindi, as you know that the a kavita, a poem, is a female, while an essay might be a male. Um, similarly, in Korean, there is a difference between formal and informal tone. Understanding this language, nuances of language is very important part of it. And these are just some of the unique characteristics uh, of these languages that need to be considered. Last but not the least, um, you need a new data. There is no excuse to not have a great data. And this data, I'm not talking about the amount of the data, but the quality of the data is one of the key important things that AI will drive upon. So that's why, I mean, as Leslie mentioned, um, I'm really happy to introduce Sutra. Uh, me and my team are working on this for almost 10, 10 or 11 months now. And we just uh, are announcing Sutra now. Um, so we want to, we are set to create an AI that can engage in meaningful conversation in any languages. Understand the nuances of different languages and provide accurate and relevant responses in scalable and affordable way. So let's dig in the details of the sutra. Um, I don't know the audience, is it how technical it is? So I will try to keep it a little bit of a level. Uh, but traditional LLMs are trained on English data, as we mentioned before. The gray letters, as you can see, the A is uh, over here. And the concepts are mixed with the languages, treated like yet another skill. So like uh, emotions, relationship, um, the, the languages of Tamils and Korean, these are mixed in uh, with these uh, languages, as well as concepts are mixed in when you train the data. This causes them to struggle. So there is a confusion happens in the token space as well as the inference space uh, on the models. And the end result is that the when you're trying to speak something in Hindi, um, model misunderstand that maybe this is a word from Korean or some other language. Uh, and that's why the token confusion comes from. So I want to tell you one very small anecdote that when I learned my life concepts in Gujarati, my mother tongue, then I started learning English as a language when I was in graduate school um, uh, all the way. I learned Korean language when I was working with a company in Samsung. Uh, I don't need to relearn the concepts that I learned as a child. I can actually already have learned the concepts, basic concepts of human have two eyes, uh, we, have, we talk like this way. We only can learn a new language. And that's what the new architecture of the Sutra is focusing upon. The Sutra's core innovation is separating the concept learning from language learning. And how do we do this thing? So there is a three-step process um, the Sutra follows. And as Leslie was mentioning, uh, we have a dual transformer model. So this next uh, Sutra masters this translation between languages and concept space, utilizing the specialized encoders and decoders inspired by this neural machine translation. So what is happening is that the core at the center is the common LLM transformer. But on the side, there's a neural NMT encoder and decoder, which is doing all the magic. So I don't want to go too much technical um, and showing the, the, the proper architecture, but this is the top level understanding that Sutra's dual transform architecture is making a lot more differences. And we will see some results very soon. The second thing that I'm sure that you all of you must have heard about recently um, is that even GPT-4.0 um, try to include more languages by compress the tokenizers and part of it. So one of the main reason other models are slow and inefficient in non-English is because they tokenization. Because in English, they generate word by word, almost word by word, uh, because each token is almost like a word um, in the English language. While in other languages, each token is almost like a character. And that's why it's expensive as well as slow in non-English market. A Indian consumer, a Hindi, if you say, how are you in Hindi, aap kaise ho? It costs actually more um, in LLM than if you ask the same question in English, five times more. And that doesn't make any sense. That is what 
one of the thing happening. So with Sutra, what we are doing is that we have our own 256K new tokenizer, a balanced tokenizer, which includes all the languages uh, in very balanced manner. And that is the, the second uh, innovations of it. And last but not the least um, is high quality data. So the question comes up, where do we get the data? Because it's impossible to get that data. Um, so at the two, we do have a consumer app that we launched uh, earlier this year in Korea, um, which is one of the fastest growing AI app in Korea called Zepi. And Zepi gave us the 20 million multi-ton conversational data. What we did is uh, in our team is that we synthetically translated this 20 million very clean conversation data uh, from user between user and AI to all the Indian languages as well as the languages like Arabic, Korean, Chinese, Japanese. And we have we are sitting on 250 million multi-ton conversation data. This data itself is in several trillion token um, multilingual data. So with, when you put all this together, um, what we started seeing is wonderful results. So this is what I'm showing you right now, that this sutra is outperforming most of the local Indian uh, or Desi LLMs that we are seeing even models like Servums or Truthreams, or you name them, and Sutra is outperforming with a similar size of the models. Even Sutra is outperforming models like GPT 3.5 or Lama, uh, which is even 70 billion tokens, uh, 70 billion parameters uh, models. Sutra is a 56 billion parameter model. Um, and not only in Hindi, even languages like Gujarati. In Gujarati, even it outperforms GPT 4, which is uh, having a score of 61 right now in MMLU. MMLU is this massive multitask language understanding it's, a, it's kind of a standard way of testing the effectiveness of any large language models. So we started seeing these great results of Sutra. Um, so we started extending to more languages, um, uh, no. other worlds, Korea, but Japan. No. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, we are running out of time because yes. we have actually run out of time. So if you can, please. Okay. okay, so I think I'm just I'm just ending on this one. That they feel free to um, try out the sutra um, on a playground. Uh, so there's a playground, and you can actually now now live compare um, and those particular models. And at the same time, we also do have a chat sutra app available, so you can also try it out in a live. Actually, you can try this thing. So um, of course, because uh, um, thanks for thank you all for your time. Um, I really think that the uh, India need its own AI. Uh, India need uh, to take the leadership in non-English uh, AI market, um, and it cannot be done by just fine-tuning uh, models coming from the outside world. We should innovate um, our own AI, and I think that's what the two in, uh, we are focusing on. Um, thank you.